Flex the Car Doctor, aka Dr. Pinnastar. That's what some people like to call me. Back at you with another Diag video on a nice looking 2015 Dodge Charger with the famous Pentastar. So, the patient owner complaint is that it shakes when applying the brakes. Most likely that's going to be rotors. Um, the owner know that already. Uh, I explained to him, if you don't, because he did say he recently was, did the brakes and rotors, but if you don't clean the mating surface off of uh, the spindle, you know, take a wire wheel and brush that rust off, you have premature rotor warpage. And I'm pretty sure that's the case. Yeah. We're going to look it over real good. Right now I'm hooking up my scan tool because it has another complaint as well. Check engine light is on and... I do believe it went into limp mode. She said she was driving and the car felt like it just shut down and kind of stayed in one gear. So we're about to see what that's about to see what that is all about right now. So I'm gonna do a system scan on it because I just want to look through the whole vehicle. While it's doing the system scan, I'm just gonna give the vehicle a good overlook because this kind of takes some time to scan each system. On these Pentastars, the common issues I always look for is Motor mounts, leaky oil cooler, uh, wobbling harmonic balancer, and something else, I can't think of it. But already, this oil cooler is shot. It's like a big puddle of oil down in there. You probably can see it just a tad. Yeah, it is a big puddle, you see that? Uh, the harmonic balance is kind of wobbling side to side. And the way I check the motor mounts is I get in the car, come on. in and I put my foot on the brake while putting it in drive and just hit the gas slightly. And as you can see, it just up. And then it reverse and check it the other That's how the engine Driver's side. Oh, I made a mistake and turned it off while I was doing the scan. Oh, hopefully I didn't mess myself up. The driver's side motor mount is shot, but I always like to replace it in pairs because I'm pretty sure it's dry rotted. This vehicle does have about 200, um, 211,000 miles on it. So quite a few. And I don't hear a pendle star tick, so that's a plus right there. We already starting off on a good foot. So let's hit report um, and see what we got. So we have four codes in the PCM, two codes in the transmission. Ugh, that's not good. Um, I always tell people I'm not a transmission expert, but uh, yeah. ABS code, let's see, the rest don't really matter. So stored, it looks like we have a camshaft positioning sensor code. So I'm gonna have to look into that. Um, downstream fuel trim system to lean. I'm have to look into that. And engine oil pressure control circuit stuck off. Okay. Uh, and we have engine torque signal received. I'm assuming it got something to do with those other codes. Uh, I'm not really sure what's going on there. System voltage low. And like I said, all the other stuff don't matter. Okay, let's jump out of this and go into the PCM. And let's look at some live data. Of course, I'm about to crank up the engine. But before I do that, I'm just gonna take a look at this drive belt that looks and feel a little dry. Yeah, I don't like the way that feels. That feels really dry. It feels like dry feet. At the bottom. Who <laughs> <laughs> dry feet you been touched? Mine. <laughs> All right. So looking at the rotors, yes, they do look like they were just changed. Maybe about a year ago. I'll give it about a year. The pads look pretty good. I am gonna take it for a test drive, but I always tell people I want to make sure the car is safe. Make sure nothing's gonna come apart on me. It does need some tires. Very bad, guys. This is unsafe. The purpose of tread on the tires versus having a ball tire 
if you hit a pole of water, this tire is more likely to hydroplane versus if you have tread, the tread is made to disperse the water away from the middle of the tire so the tire won't basically float on water. Um, when tires float, you are basically have no control of that vehicle. So don't drive around with ball of tires. Got good tires in the rear. Let's check the other side. Uh, got another ball one over here. So, this thing is suffering from tire problem. I mean, really, I recommend all four tires because this one is pretty much on the wear bar. That's not good. So I would notate that. Jeez. We really have to, when, anytime someone do rotors, you really have to take a wire wheel to that spindle because they wouldn't even be in this situation. I see a lot of people make a mistake and do that. They'll just pull off the old rotor, slap the new one on, and expect great things to happen. And on down the road, they'll be in the same situation. All right. So motor mounts, oil cooler the norm and this oil cooler is leaking pretty bad because it's starting to leak down behind the transmission the transmission it looks kind of oily you're not going to be able to see it through there but i see it just take my word for it, good people um but it's got oil all over it this oil cooler do not have long before it rupture so i definitely need to make sure they know about that before it leave them on side of the road all right, I'm gonna take another look at the code so I can get a mental what I'm looking at here. So let's look at that camshaft positioning sensors. Bank two, sensor one. Um, now this is a two-in-one camshaft positioning sensor. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to show you. Let me see. This is the camshaft positioning sensor right here. It reads, it's like a two-in-one sensor. It reads both of the cams. This is a dual overhead cam vehicle and the cam sensor kind of like splits off and one little sensor reading reads here, one sensor reading, which is like the, the magnet pickup reads on this one. Um, pretty neat design, I may say. Just combine that one sensor and bam, that's what you left. So I'm getting a, sensor code here and let's see it's the same code sensor circuit sensor circuit intermittent so it's like on and off and for bank two so bank two is normally a lean condition so I'm gonna look at the fuel trim and engine oil pressure sensor that's basically it's probably an most commonly the engine oil pressure sensor needs to be replaced which would get replaced when i do the oil cooler so i'm not going to really worry about that um it is leaking oil so they probably don't ran it low on oil at one point of time so it can throw that off so my focus is not too much of that but more of the camshaft positioning sensor so let's look up some live data and see what we come up with What did I say? Bank, bank one. Oh, I forgot which bank it was. That quick. That's why I tried to get a mental picture of it. But. I mean, I could always pause this and uh, I could rewind just, the I footage. Could just, I could just look at that, or I can just look at the sensor readouts and see what's what looks funny. So, uh, if I see something out the ordinary, guys, I'm gonna put it on and, and show you what I'm looking at uh, until then. Let me scroll through this to find out what I need. Now, this is the smaller scanner. The bigger scanner, I have the ability to pick out which systems I want, so I don't have to scroll through this big long list of stuff. Um, but I don't feel like bringing that out right now. I don't think this problem is that serious enough where I need a $5,000 scanner. Look it over. Let me look at this, I'll be right back. 
Just got finished looking at the live data readout. Everything looked normal, even my fuel trims. Um, so that kind of led me to believe that it was like a history code, something you just never know when these cars come in. And, you know, sometimes it's hard to get information from the customer. They probably had Joe Schmo looking at it and he probably unhooked something. But my readings was perfectly fine, so it wasn't nothing to show. Um, so I went to the generic part because sometimes when using these scanners, certain makes and models, it'll, it'll lay out like history, passcode or something like that. I didn't see it or I probably overlooked it. So I just went back to the generic and this is what I found. So if it's a current code, it'll say current and pending. And the only current and pending I have, as you can see, is no other pending codes. Um, and it threw a permanent, meaning it's currently happening and this is a problem. And as you can see, for each current, there's no other pending but PO6DD, engine oil pressure, control circuit performance stuck off. Um, uh, I think I've seen this code before. Um, it ended up being some about low oil pressure. Let me just do a quick search on it. Oh, did I? No, I went to the wrong thing. Uh, the engine oil pressure on these supposed to be around 29 or more at idle. This one's sitting at about 22, and that'll make it go into limp mode. That's probably the issue they're having. So. Let's do a quick search and get a better understanding of the code description. So it says this trouble code means that your vehicle engine oil pressure sensor is um, signaling the, the powertrain uh, yeah, signaling the powertrain control module that the oil pressure is too low. So yes, I was right. So I need to focus on that. And already, like I say, like I said before, the oil cooler is leaking. So I'm gonna want to start there patch up the leaks and then retest. Yeah, I probably should. Yeah, I want to fix that problem first because it could just be a leaking oil cooler. Um, yeah, that's that's what I'm going to do. But let me show you the live readout of the oil pressure and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So I'm going to ignore all the rest of these codes for now and just focus on the engine oil pressure section of, for, the, for this vehicle. Go out. I will once I pull it up. I cut back in. Here we go. So I brought it up to the top for you. It's actually 20 psi. Um, that is not good. Uh, so I think my next step is to talk to the customer, and let them know my findings because this whole system works off of oil pressure, and if the oil pressure is not right, it causes a lot of issues with these particular engines. Um, now I'm debating whether I should just jump straight to the oil cooler and retest but I think that'll be wasting money because I'm kind of torn in between doing a oil pressure check on it and replace and replacing the oil cooler uh, I know you guys probably say do the test because for those who don't know me I hate wasting people money I look at other people money like I look at my own money and I try to keep my own money. I'm pretty sure the same for you, right? Not for me. <laughs> I like to spend your money. <laughs> oh, gosh. So, let me have that conversation, and I'll let you know the outcome, because I know to do that test, is, it's going to take a little bit more than this diagnostic right here, because uh, it's a lot more involved. But let's take it for a quick test drive because I do need to verify the transmission because I did see those transmission codes. So hop in, let's go for a ride. Alrighty, so far so good. I haven't made it out the parking lot, so that's, I guess that's not a real test. So I can't say so far so good. And it's raining out here and I got these bald tires. How about that? Right, this is why I didn't want to ride. <laughs> Feels good. No complaints. Let's apply the brakes. Oh shoot! Eesh. Feel like the front end gonna fall apart. <laughs> that was unexpected. I think that's a lot more than rotor. Yeah. No, that's definitely rotor. It's like like that. Jeez. No, that's a bumble. That's not a. I mean, 
something. Yeah. Oh no. This is awful. Oh my gosh. Let's get her up to about 60. Shoot, I went into limbo. mode. It's it not sh shutting down on it. Yeah, it's not even letting me go into 60. Eesh. That's because of that code. Um, I have a charger in the shop now that we're. Um, Challenger. He, yeah, Challenger. He opted to replace the engine on it. Oh yeah, I won't even take this on the main road. So let's just go ahead. Yeah, I'm turning around. This is this is too bad. Uh, the story is he had the same code, did some tests, um, broke everything down, found out that the the cam was heavily chewed up, and it wasn't even making no noise. It sounded like this one. Um, is reading low oil pressure, but. This one is worse. <clears throat> this one is reading 20 PSI. He was reading around 25 PSI. And it, it was just going to take him a lot. Uh, he had to replace them. <laughs> Gosh, I can't even think straight. <laughs> I'm about to just not hit the brakes. Let's just drive. Stop by faith. How about that, sweetie? Is that a thing? I guess. <laughs> uh, oh, he would have had to replace the lifters. Oh, gosh. What the fuck? Not only did he pull out, but he took his sweet time. Uh, he would have to replace the lifters, the cam. He would have had to do the oil pump. Um, he, then I would have had to check the bearings at the bottom for scoring. It, it would have just been so much um, money. So he opted for an engine. And I think that saved him a little bit. Did it, Sweetie? Did you look at his car? Yeah, he might have saved a thousand. Yeah, so we opted for that. So we're back and we made it back safely. So that's a plus because, man, this thing here is is a hoot. This is not road worthy. <laughs> yes, I'm going off road. Yeah, this is not road worthy. Let me go talk to the patient's owner. Ooh, I feel. Ooh. <laughs> All right. I hate to get bad news on a rainy day. Oh, it is raining. Yeah, it's raining outside. Just got finished talking with the customer and I had to drop a bomb on him, unfortunately. Um, just to recap on everything. Uh, nope, I got some news. Report. So, spoke with the patient owner and at around 100,000 miles, you can pretty sure, you can pretty sure you know, drop down in the comment what I'm about to say. Pause it. Drop down in the comment right now. It was a ticker, guys. It was a ticker. Um, he never had the lifters replaced. And as you heard, the engine sounded decent. It had a little shutter to it. That was kind of suspect. Now that we know this yeah. new information. <laughs> I can't find the push button. Yeah, so I got a little shutter to it. I can feel it. Doesn't feel like a pencil stop. So the story behind it, at 100K, around 100K, it started ticking. Kept driving it. I think he was getting ready to get the ticking done, the, the noise fixed. Got quoted for it and everything for another shop, I'm assuming. And the noise went away. So I guess they thought, hey, all is well. Can that noise go away? You don't get that problem fixed ASAP. This car got 200,000 miles on it now, so that's been a while. All those metal fragments will start destroying and eating up at your internals, like oil pump, your main bearings. Guys, this engine is pretty much shot. Uh, I would have to go through this engine literally and, and kind of do a mild rebuild on it. That's checking main bearing caps. Uh, Connecting rod bearing caps. I'm pretty sure they scarred up. Um, changing the oil pump, changing the oil cooler. So at this point, you know, for simplicity and getting their car back faster, they might as well put an engine in it because what it's doing is, like you've seen on the test drive, it's going into limp mode because the oil pressure is not within spec. And uh, I know, I know, I said earlier I would like to put a oil filter housing on it, but that's kind of before I knew it had ticking issues. And even then, I've seen worse oil cooler housing issues than this, and the oil pressure was still in spec. So I'm pretty sure if I hook a oil pressure gauge up to this engine, it's gonna yield the same results 
ending in a motor. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna close the hood, and give it back to the customer, um, roughly estimate to get this car back up to road worthy specs is about six grand, five, six grand. We're talking about rotors, engine replacement, if they decide to go that route. Um, we got motor mount issues, got oil cooler issues, tires, tires are not cheap. So yeah, they had to t they had to swallow a big pill when I, you know, gave them the bad news. Unfortunately, um, like I said, it sucks to deliver bad news. I'd rather be delivering great news. And if you look at the car and listen to it, you'd be like, "Wow, there's nothing wrong with it." Ooh, these doggone Dodgers are sneaky, man. They'll hide some stuff from you. I'm telling you, they got me fooled. I was like, "Oh yeah, she sounds good." Can't even barely tell it's running, but man. If I break that engine down, I'm pretty sure I'm going to find some, some issues. Um, the issues I'm talking about, come on over here. Show the good people. <clears throat> the reason I'm familiar with that code, because I went through it with this Challenger one. Same thing. I uh, got uh, 200,000 miles on it. It's actually 2012. And came in sounding just like that. I didn't even think nothing of it. So I told the customer I'm going to have to break it down and run some more tests and i found this the cam lobe is completely chewed down and he's been driving like that for god who knows how long um you're probably not gonna be see it, see it good on camera but if you compare it to this one which they supposed to be the same you can kind of get a clear picture yeah that um, one is lower and than this one okay you see it on camera mm -hmm. it's the rocker is just point, point to the one it's supposed to look like Oh, this one. See how thick that is? Mm -hmm. Look how little that is. So we opted for an engine because I was explaining to them the same thing that I explained to these good folks, that the bearings are probably scratched up real bad. Uh, he just drove too long with it uh, ticking. Now, if you catch this stuff early, the engine does a good job of filtering the majority of this stuff out. If you catch it early, and you won't have damage. Um, but, ah. Uh, that's it guys I and mean, i don't know what they're gonna do from here but you know i told them if i start going into the engine it's gonna cost them probably for bad news and hey you still got to pay me for tearing it down doing additional tests just to tell you the same thing i just told you so uh, i think they're doing the right thing they're gonna go home and think about it and see what they're gonna do and, and of course you know it's kind of hard to sell it if you you know i'm not trying to put nobody business but we all have car notes that's that's no surprise they're good people um, you know, still owing the car <clears throat> and left with a big bill, that kind of sucks, you know. So, guys, I'm gonna end it right there. Until next time, love you. Make sure you like and subscribe, show your support, and see you on the next video.